What's up friends? My name is Maggie and I'm so excited to be here today. This month we're all super fans. We're cheering each other on and choosing to show kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Check out what we're going to be discovering this month. Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and I'm setting this up just for you. It's my Bible. You can check it out on the big screen, on a tablet, or flip through the pages of an actual book. Any way you choose to read it, this is God's Word. God inspired dozens of writers over hundreds of years to record His story. How He loves us so much, He sent His very own Son, Jesus, to live with us and die for us and return to life. God gave everything to make a way for you to live with Him forever. He thinks you're that valuable and He shows it through His amazing kindness. I have four stories right here that walk us through what kindness can look like. We start off in the book of Ephesians, where the Apostle Paul writes a letter to the believers in Ephesus. He reminds them, Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Kindness isn't just a nice idea. It's something you do, all because God was first kind to you. Let's take a look at kindness in action with a trip to the Old Testament book of Ruth. Here, Ruth is all alone when her husband dies. But instead of caving in, she looks out. Ruth befriends her mother-in-law, Naomi, on a long journey to a foreign land. She works hard to provide food for Naomi, and as she puts herself on the line, Ruth discovers that she's not the only one who can show kindness in a big way. Time to hop back to the New Testament and the book of Matthew. Jesus himself points out that kindness isn't just for those who are kind to you. He tells a crowd, Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. See, under the law, a Roman soldier could force a Jew to carry his heavy pack for an entire mile. That's totally unfair, right? but Jesus blows the lid off of that. One mile, that's required. But what if you choose to go two? That's an extreme act of kindness no one will forget. Let's wrap up in the Gospel of Luke. Here, Jesus tells the story of a man on a road trip. The guy takes a bad turn and ends up in the wrong part of the desert where robbers attack. They take all he's got and leave him for dead. Still, the injured man's got a chance. Two religious leaders are coming his way. Will they help? Or will it be the man from Samaria, the place every Jew avoids? When things look dark, kindness can turn up where you least expect it. True kindness shows that everyone is valuable because everyone is made in the image of God. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me.
It's important for us to show kindness and treat others the way we want to be treated. After all, God has been so kind to us. We can follow his example as we choose to show kindness to the people he puts in our lives. God showed us the greatest example of kindness when he sent us Jesus. Let's praise him for that. That's right, Jesus is the very best. Listen to these words from Psalm 89, 15. Blessed are those who have learned to shout praise to you. Lord, they live in the light of your kindness. Every day, God gives us his kindness and love. Let's use our voices to worship him now as we sing this new song, Give a Little Kindness. Joy I can't control I want to sing, I want to dance And give everyone a chance To hear about this in this life I know Give a little 
66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians. Chapter 4, verse 32. Sally Jessup and May Lynn lived in the same town and went to the same school. And both girls had YouTube shows about slime that racked up views from across the world. Get slimed with May! Sally's Slime Creations. The two girls were polite to each other in the hall at school. Hey there. Hi. But they weren't exactly friends. Either. I'm doing glow-in-the-dark slime next week, so you should do something different. Look, I give my viewers what they want. Which is basically the same thing over and over. Rainbow sand slime, rainbow unicorn slime, rainbow crunchy slime. You're just jealous how many views my rainbow glitter slime got. Whatever. Plus, you use borax in your slime. It's not safe. Is too! Liquid starch is way better. The two girls glared at each other and marched off. A few days later, May watched Sally's newest episode. Sally's Slime Creations. She really should get better theme music. Here's a super important PSA before we get started. You've probably seen some slime recipes that use borax, but borax isn't safe or healthy. Hey, that is not true. I know there's another YouTube show telling you to use borax for the best slime, but in my opinion, you should just unsubscribe to that channel. What? And now it's time for some rainbow fluffy slime. You have got to be kidding. Sally just told thousands of people to stop watching my show. Well, I am unsubbing her right now. May couldn't stop thinking about what Sally had done. I cannot believe her. In the cafeteria at school the next day, Sally walked over to where May was sitting with some other friends at the lunch table. Can I sit here? No way! She can't sit here! When Sally spilled her backpack at the lockers, Oh no. May pretended not to notice and marched right on past. That evening, when May recorded her next episode, she had an announcement of her own. Today on Get Slime with May, I've got an amazing guest to tell us all about the science of slime. But first, I need to warn you about another slime channel. Someone's telling you not to use borax. Well, you should hit unsubscribe fast cause she's a liar. Borax is completely safe and makes the best slime. 
Now it's time to welcome our guest, Wendy Newton. She's a chemistry expert. May switched to a split screen with her guest, a middle-aged woman with wild curly hair and sleepy eyes. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. I'm honored to be here. I gotta ask, you think borax is the best thing to use for slime, right? Borax is great if it's used correctly. I think God has given each of us the smarts to look up safety guidelines and be wise about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's get down to it. You're a chemist. How cool is that? You could say we're all chemists. I mean, just baking brownies is chemistry. That's right. What kind of chemistry are you whipping up for your dinner? Oh, well, it's actually uh, 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 3 a.m. here. Wait, what? I'm in Dubai right now. But that's like halfway around the world, so it's night. I, oh, I am so sorry. I woke you up. It's all right. You said that in your email. I forgot. It's okay, really. You're being so nice about it. Hey, kind is cool. There's this verse in the Bible from the book of Ephesians. It's kind of my motto. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. May frowned. She had to admit she wasn't always great at being kind when someone made her angry. Look, I've messed up so many times and God has wiped the slate clean every single time. That makes it a lot easier to forgive when other people make mistakes. Like calling in the middle of the night? Hey, aren't we a little off topic from slime? Um, I think I'm gonna have to restart this recording. I said some stuff about someone else I need to delete. And how about I call you back in the morning? I mean, my morning, your afternoon. Hmm, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. May leaned back in her chair and released a long breath. I haven't been very kind at all, even a little. Grabbing her phone, May started a DM to Sally. Hey, I'm sorry about the lunch table thing. I think rainbow slime is pretty cool. Maybe we should do a show together sometime. May wasn't sure how Sally would respond. But she did feel better knowing that she'd taken the steps toward being kind, instead of focusing on payback. It sure helps me to remember to be kind to others when I remember how God was kind to each one of us. God showed his kindness by sending his only son, Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross and paid the price for our sins, we can be forgiven. So remember how God has been kind to you. When you're having a hard time getting along with someone, make the first move. Choose to forgive. Choose to be kind when you could be unkind. Be kind to others because God is kind to you. Our memory verse for this month is Colossians 3.12. Check it out. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12. Did you catch that? It says to put on kindness just like you put on clothes. So when you're putting on your clothes in the morning this week, don't forget to put on kindness too. Let's pray before we head out. Father, we thank you that you showed us your kindness by sending Jesus to die on the cross to take our sins onto himself so that we can be in relationship with you. Help us remember to show your kindness to everyone we meet. In your name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you next time. So, I'll give